Is the Canon C70 still worth it in 2024? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name is Javier. I'm a wedding filmmaker based out of Central Florida. And this channel is all about wedding filmmaking, business tips, and life experiences. Let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. Is the Canon C70 still worth it in 2024? The simple answer is yes, absolutely yes. So I'm gonna be sharing my experiences with the C70, the features I think why it's still worth in 2024, and you guys can use that information to interpret it, how it's gonna be useful for you. But let's go ahead and dive into it. Reason number one is internal NDs are absolutely game changer. I'm out here shooting outside at f1.2 with a speed booster at ND4, which is nice. And I'm exposed properly and um, I can shoot in shallow depth of field, blow out as much as I can to the background. And so NDs are absolute must, especially at weddings when you're going from indoor, outdoors and different scenarios, quickly be able to expose your NDs. Using your NDs is absolute game changer. And I can never go back to not having this feature. I own three Canon C70s, and so when I pick, put one camera down, if it's on a gimbal to go handheld and whatnot, I am ready. And internal NDs are absolute game changer. Um, yeah, enough about NDs. You probably guys already heard of it. Reason number two has to be internal RAW. RAW is a awesome feature to have on a C70, especially that you get to shoot it internally. Like right now, I'm actually shooting in RAW. Not because, I mean, I really shouldn't be, but I just want to for the heck of it. The reason I personally like to shoot raw is one for that 12-bit color. And the second reason has to be for dialing in the exact white balance that does come in handy, especially when you're color grading um, and you're using multiple cameras and things of that nature. I don't always shoot in raw, but I do shoot in raw for certain weddings that I really want to high highlight as a portfolio piece. I do shoot in raw for those weddings and those moments, but I don't shoot weddings all the time in raw. I would like to, I like to get there, but it's very expensive. So business wise, I don't think it's very practical or smart um, unless you're charging spe high and specific for that wedding that you are able to afford to store these weddings in raw. So that's one of the reasons why um, I love raw though, but I just don't shoot it all the time. Commercial work, if you do, things other than weddings then it is really really uh neat to have raw in shooting raw reason number three has to be battery life the battery life is absolutely amazing on this camera i enjoy it because on wedding days i only need two batteries and it'll last me a full wedding day which is really nice so batteries is reason number three and reason number four is a speed booster the speed booster, I can get a full frame look and I can also get an extra stop of light. And for me, that's absolutely game changer. And also reason number three is because you get to use EF glass and there's a lot of EF glass on the market and it's much cheaper than RF glass. And I can pair it with a prime lens and I can get, you know, really fast um, or more light into the sensor. So like right now I'm shooting at F1.2, a shallow depth of field. My background is much more um you know out of focus and if i really really need to if i'm shooting like a f1.2 on a 50 or something i am able to go like to 0 0.95 so for those low light situations that comes so in handy as long as you have a fast prime lens and i've used that for weddings all the time where i just go on a f1.2 and shoot all the way wide open and i get the extra stop of light and i don't have to worry about my you know bumping up and cranking up my ISO. So that's a huge benefit. I know some people don't like it because of the flare that you get when it's backlit in the lights, you get like a purple flare in it around the middle of the sensor. So that does get annoying. But if you know how to, how to look out for that and avoid that, it's something that's easy to do. And the bonus one has to be number five is Canon itself. Um, I'm only gonna talk about my experience with Canon and that's been with my cameras having to get repaired and serviced um, because I've had the infamous hinge mess up on the C70 and I have three C70s. So with that being said, I sent, I've sent it in to get repaired and every single time I've sent it in, I've gotten back within a week and that allows me to continue my business and be stress-free and knowing that my camera equipment is working properly and Canon has honored their warranty each and every single time. So that's been game changer for me. I can't complain about it. Um, and 
that's one of the reasons I would probably never switch from Canon because if my camera goes down, I know that they can get it repaired. Um, while I've had Fuji, I've had Sony. I know for some Sony users, they've they've had to find a private repair facility because Sony did, didn't have an infrastructure. And I'm like, whoa, like that's not good. <laughs> what happens if you, you know, and you own an FX3. I'm like, man, what happens if that thing messed up completely? you have to send it to a private manufacturer or a private person company to get it repaired and not Sony itself, then like you might as well just kind of buy the whole brand new camera. Like what's worth it at that point, right? If you're, if the manufacturer can't, you can't send it in to get it repaired. I've had Fuji and I've sent in a camera to get um, repaired and looked at and Fuji was pretty much outrageous and, and their, their, their process wasn't great in handling so I can't recommend it as a professional videographer. Um, photographer maybe be, might be different, right? But from my experience, that's what I wouldn't. Now, if you have the Canon C70, or if you don't have a Canon C70, you're looking to get into a Canon C70. These are some of the things that you kind of need to think about before you buy the camera. Are you a handheld shooter? If you're a handheld shooter, just know that you're not gonna have IBIS you're going to need to get an optical stabilized lens um, because the digital stabilization of this camera is horrendous. So if you're a handheld shooter for weddings, that might not, might not be it for you. Um, and so I personally shoot gimbal because my, my style is much more editorial-esque and I like to have those nice smooth panning movements. Every now and then I can do documentary style, but I don't like to do it all the time. Uh, just because I'm obsessed with having nice smooth and clean shots. So that might be something that might bother you. However, um, that's something to consider and that's why I'm bringing this up. Um, if you shoot in a shallow depth of field like an f1.2, f1.4 all the time, um, I would highly recommend you getting the C70 because of the internal NDs. But if you don't, like if you shoot F3, F4 for more group shots and you want to get more people in focus, which I do myself as well, um, I tend to go more shallow depth of field for those portraits for the bride and groom and individuals. But when you're shooting groups, you obviously want to get more people in focus. Um, then I recommend going for like an FX3 or a different camera, right? Um, if stabilization is something that you value, again, go for an FX3 or a Lumix camera. Their stabilization is absolutely ridiculous. Um, if autofocus is something that is important to you, the Canon C70 does very well in autofocus as long as it's in a bright lit condition. Now, when you're in a re uh, reception and it's super dark, that's when your autofocus is gonna be horrendous on the C70. I go manual focus when when it when it comes to that time. But if you want autofocus, then probably go with an FX3. That 12,800 ISO is gonna be useful and hopefully it can track. So those are some of the reasons why I would say you might not wanna get a Canon C70. Um, so those are just my reasoning um, if you don't want it. But I think is an absolutely still worth uh, worth it in 2024. I don't see myself switching to any other camera systems um, or upgrading to any other camera until who knows, maybe another three or four more years because people are still consuming videos in 4K. And sometimes, most of the times, if you're, people are consuming on their phones, it's like 2.7K. So it's not like they're consuming the actual content in 6K, 8K. We all know we go 6K, 8K, everything goes up. It gets more expensive. It's like inflation, right? Every time resolution goes up, inflation goes up along with it because now we got to buy more memory, more storage solutions for it, backup solutions for the initial, you know, the initial capturing of what, what you're doing. And that gets all expensive. And so... For me, I don't see it's it's being it's worth it to upgrade to a 6K or 8K type of camera. 4K is absolutely incredible. But let me know your guys' thoughts and um, till the next one. Peace.